We're here at Hastings Racecourse in Vancouver today to shoot a little bit of horse racing. Fuji Film Canada has sent me this pre-production X-T2 and I've outfitted it with a 100 to 400. Fuji touts this as a huge improvement for continuous autofocusing and bursts and less blackout periods in between frames. I'm looking forward to see how it does against Jimmy's camera here. Yeah, I brought out a Nikon D810 with a 200 to 400, 1.4. We'll take some shots, switch cameras, and then uh, we'll talk about the results. Ready? Yeah, they go. It's my horn. <laughs> Storm, the rail. Don shooting buns yeah. again. Right it's nice because you get all the dirt kicking up. Know. You know what I've noticed, Jimmy? The lag in between the frames is really disrupting. Yeah, when I was testing it out, it, it's like you're watching a uh, 10 frame per second cartoon, you know, that, an yeah. animation or a film. So it's like, where and am I, you, where you am you I lose, tracking? Yeah, and you lose track of your lead subject because it either jumps ahead, you jump ahead or it jumps ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Jimmy, we should really trade off. Okay. Wow, that's light. I know, not bad, eh? Well, it's so, oh, so slow. How'd you do, Jimmy? You know what? It's pretty good. It's nice and snappy. But once I got here and hit 10 frames a second, I, I, I lost Slide the composition. Yeah. Yeah. Opening quarter, illegally 25 flat. So John, we spent the day uh, shooting horse races, uh, DSLR versus the new Fuji X-T2, which I have to say is a beautiful camera, but it has some faults. It does. Nothing's perfect. I found the burst rate actually better than the Nikon DSLR. It's got a better burst rate than like the Canon 5D. Obviously not as good as the D4S, but good, comparable. Yeah, Usable. It, yeah, it was uh, snappy, poppy. I could uh, keep things uh, in focus, like the autofocus tracking. So that's the next uh, thing I want to talk about. It's nice. It's really nice. Yeah. The autofocus was good. It managed to keep up with the horses. I found it actually managed to keep track as fast as the Nikon uh, D810 that you have there. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think it might actually uh, track autofocus a little bit better, but. I have to say, in terms of lens selection, I did not like that lens. No, it's, uh, it feels a little gimmicky, something maybe my child would use. And unfortunately, it's all that Fuji has right now. It's yeah. their longest lens. And I think it's a great first attempt. Uh, but I think if they want some more professionals to getting involved, they're going to have to come up some, with something a bit longer, maybe a fixed f4. You know, I think that uh, type of lens would be probably perfect for um, maybe a weekend wildlife photographer uh, mm -hmm. be probably quite light and easy to carry into the bush. You need some great conditions though because it's 5.6 and if you want to use a converter with that suddenly it's f8. So unless it's a day like today where it's just slightly overcast or sunny you're gonna really need to bump up that ISO. So you know there's no such thing as a dream camera and this camera does so many things well but it's that EVF. So this doesn't live up to all your fantasies? No. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it go wrong? You know what, that EVF, when you're shooting something like this in action, all of a sudden it seems like you're watching a 10 frame per second video animation. Yeah. So I think what you're talking about is in between frames there is a lag. And you can be going great guns and have, be right on your subject, but eventually you lose pace with your subject and you suddenly find yourself behind or ahead because you can't keep that eye contact. Yeah, and you just can't compose your image anymore. And I have to say that, you know, it's not just for sports. If you're shooting something like spot news and you're hitting that burst rate at 10 frames per second or whatever, and then you can't compose all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you know, that, that's, that's a no-brainer for me. I would not Is buy it that a deal camera. Killer? It's a deal, it's a deal killer. killer. I've got to say, I don't think it's a deal killer for me because I think there's still a lot of other aspects that this camera is great for. Right. I think for 90% of what I do for the, for work, I could use this camera. You know, I shoot funerals sometimes, I shoot weddings, and those those are times when you don't want to hear the sound of a shutter. Right. And a mirrorless camera is a great alternative. Right. So the Fuji X-T2, maybe not ready for uh, daily pro use? 
I think it is ready for daily pro use. As a matter of fact, I have been using it for daily pro use. I think you need to be selective about what you're going to use it for. Right. And you know, I've seen a number of three people come through my workshop, and I think this would be perfect for them. Serious photographers who maybe are not doing it full time, but appreciate good optics and a good body. And I think that they can accomplish a lot with a camera system like this. And that this will extend their capabilities as photographers. So we spent the afternoon shooting horse racing and we're comparing Filson bags versus Think Tank bags. Filson stood up for most of the day. It did. Uh, think Tank bag was uh, a little bit better because it seemed to keep all the items inside. What the f*** are you going on about? <laughs>